Chapter 13 of The Fall of Troy by Smyrnanius Quintus Translated by Arthur S. Way Born 13 February 1847 Died 25 December 1930 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. So feasted they through Troy, and in their midst loud pealed the flutes and pipes. On every hand was song and dance, laughter and cries confused of banqueteers beside the meats and wine. They, lifting in their hands the beaker's brim, recklessly drank, till heavy of brain they grew, till rolled their fluctuant eyes. Now and again some mouth would babble the drunkard's broken words. The household gear, the very roof and wall, seemed as they rocked. All things they looked on seemed whirled in wild dance. About their eyes a veil of mist dropped, for the drunkard sight is dimmed, and the wit dulled, when rise the fumes to the brain. And thus a heavy-handed feaster cried, For not the Danians mustered that great host hither. Fools! They have wrought not their intent, but with hopes unaccomplished from their own town, like silly boys or women they have fled. So cried a Trojan, Wit befogged with wine, full, nor discerned destruction at the doors. When sleep had locked his fetters everywhere through Troy, on folk fulfilled of wine and meat, then Sinon lifted high a blazing torch to show the Argive men the splendor of fire. But fearfully the while his heart beat, lest the men of Troy might see it, and the plot be suddenly revealed. But on their beds, Sleeping their last sleep lay they, heavy with wine, the host saw, and from Tenedos set sail. Then nigh the horse drew Sinon, softly he called, full softly, that no man of Troy might hear, but only Achaea's chiefs, far from whose eyes sleep hovered, so athirst were they for fight. They heard, and to Odysseus all inclined their ears, he bade them urgently go forth, softly and fearlessly, and they obeyed the battle summons, pressing hot in haste to leap to earth. But in his subtlety he stayed them from all thrusting eagerly forth. But first himself, with swift unfaltering hands, helped of Apeius, here, there, unbarred the ribs of the horse of beams. Above the planks a little he raised his head, and gazed around on all sides, if haply he might descry one Trojan waking yet. As when a wolf, with hunger stung to heart, comes from the hills, and ravenous for flesh draws nigh the flock, penned in the wide folds, slinking past the men and dogs that watch, all keen toward the sheep, then o'er the fold wall leaps with soundless feet. So stole Odysseus down from the horse. With him followed the war fain lords of Hellas' league, orderly stepping down the ladders, which Apeius framed for paths of mighty men, for entering and passing forth the horse, who down them now on this side, that side, streamed as fearless wasp, startled by stroke of axe in angry mood, pour all together forth from the tree bowl, at sound of woodman's blow, so battle kindled forth the horse they poured, into the midst of that strong city of Troy, with hearts that left expectant, with swift hand snatched they the brands for the dying hearths, and fired temple and palace. Onward to the gates sped they, and swiftly slew the slumbering guards, then held the gate towers till their friends should come. Fast rode the host the while, on swept the ships over the great flood. Thetis made their paths straight, and behind them sent a driving wind, speeding them, and the hearts of the Achaeans glowed. Swiftly to Hellespont shore they came, and there beat they the keels again, and deftly dealt with what so tackling appertains to ships. Then leapt they a land, and hastened on to Troy, silent as sheep that hurry to the fold from woodland pasture on an autumn eve. So without sound of voices marched they on unto the Trojans' fortress, eager all to help those mighty chiefs with foes begirt. Now these, as famished wolves, fierce glaring round, fall on a fold mid the long forest hills, 
while sleeps the toil-worn watchman, and they rend the sheep on every hand within the walls in darkness, and all round are heaped the slain. So these within the city smote and slew, as swarm the awakened foe around them. Yet fast as they slew, I faster closed on them those thousands, mad to thrust them from the gates. Slipping in blood, and stumbling o'er the dead, their line reeled, and destruction loomed o'er them, though Danian thousands near and nearer drew. But when the whole host reached the wall of Troy, into the city of Priam, breathing rage of fight, with reckless battle-lust they poured, and all that fortress found they full of war, and slaughter, palaces, temples, horribly blazing on all sides, clothed their hearts with joy. In deadly mood then charged they on the foe, Ares and fell Eno maddened there. Blood ran in torrents, drenched was all the earth, as Trojans and their alien helpers died. Here were men dying, quelled by bitter death, all up and down the city in their blood. Others on them were falling, gasping forth their life's strength, Others clutching in their hands their bowels that looked through hideous gashes forth, wandering in wretched plight around their homes. Others whose feet, while yet sleeping they lay, had been hewn off with groans unutterable, crawled mid the corpses. Some who had rushed to fight lay now in dust with hands and heads hewn off. Some were there through whose backs, even as they fled, the spear had passed clear through to the breast and some whose waist the lance had pierced impaling them were sharpest things the anguish-laden steel and all about the city dolorous howls of dogs uprose and miserable moans of strong men stricken to death and every home with awful cries was echoing rang the shrieks of women like screams of cranes which see an eagle swooping on them from the sky which have no courage to resist but scream long terror shrieks in dread of Zeus's bird. So here, so there the Trojan women wailed, some starting from their sleep, some to ground leaping. They thought not in that agony of robe or zone. In naught but tunics clad distraught they wandered. Others found no hell nor cloak to cast about them. But as came on with their foes, they stood with beating hearts trembling, as fettered by despair assaying all hapless with their hands alone to hide their nakedness. And some in frenzy of woe their tresses tore, and beat their breast and screamed. Others against that stormy torrent of foes recklessly rushed, insensible of fear, through mad desire to aid the perishing, husbands and children, for despair had given high courage. Shrieks had startled from their sleep soft little babes, whose hearts had never known trouble, and there with one another lay, gasping their lives out. Some there were whose dreams changed to a sudden vision of doom. All round the fell fates gloated horribly o'er the slain. And even as swine be slaughtered in the court of a rich king who makes his folk a feast, so without number they were slain. The wine left in the mixing bowls was blent with blood gruesomely, no man bear a sword unstained with murder of defenceless folk of Troy, though he were but a weakling in fair fight. And, as by wolves or jackals sheep are torn, what time the furnace breath of midnoon heat darts down, and all the flock beneath the shade are crowded, and the shepherd is not there, but to the homestead bears afar their milk, and the fierce brutes leap on them, tear their throats, gorge to the their ravenous maws, and then lap the dark blood, and linger to slay, all in mere lust of slaughter, and provide an evil banquet for that shepherd lord. So through the city of Priam, Danian slew, one after other in that last fight of all. No Trojan there was woundless. All men's limbs with blood in torrents spilt were darkly dashed. Nor scathless were the Danians in the fray. With breakers some were smitten, with tables some, thrust in the eyes of some were burning brands, snatched from the hearth. Some died transfixed with spits, yet left within the hot flesh of the swine, whereon the red breath of the fire-god beat. Others, struck down by bills and axes keen, gasped in their blood. 
from some man's hands were shorn the fingers who in wild hope to escape the imminent death had clutched the blades of swords and here in that dark tumult one had hurled a stone and crushed the crown of a friend's head like wild beast trapped and stabbed within a fold on a lone steading mad with despair and kindled rage beneath that night of horror hot with battle lust here there the fighters rushed and hurtled through the palace of priam many an argive fell spear slain for whatso trojan in his halls might seize a sword might lift a spear in hand slew foes ay heavy though he were with wine up flashed a glare unearthly through the town for many an argive bare in hand a torch to know in that dim battle friends from foes then tydeus son mid the war storm met spearman carobas lordly megdon's son and neath the left ribs pierced him with a lance where run the lifeways of man's meat and drink so met him black death borne upon the spear down in dark blood he fell mid host of slain ah fool the bride he won not priam's child cassandra yea his loveliest for whose sake to Priam's burg but yesterday he came, and vaunted he would thrust the Argives back from Ilium. Never did the gods fulfill his hope. The fates hurled doom upon his head. With him the slayer laid Eurydamus low, and Tenor's gallant son-in-law, who most for prudence was preeminent in Troy. Then he met Aleonius, the elder of days, and flashed his terrible sword forth all the limbs of that grey sire were palsied with his fear he put forth trembling hands with one he caught the swift avenging sword with one he clasped the hero's knees despite his fury of war a moment paused his wrath or haply a god held back the sword a pace that the old man might speak to his fierce foe one word of prayer piteously he cried terror overwhelmed i kneel before thee Whosoe'er thou be of mighty Argives, O oh, compassionate my suppliant hands, Abate thy wrath. To slay the young and valiant is a glorious thing, But if thou smite an old man, Small renown waits on thy prowess. Therefore turn from me thine hands against young men, If thou dost hope ever to come to grey hairs such as mine. So he spake, but replied strong Tydeus' son, old man i look to attain honoured age but while my strength yet waxeth will i not spare any foe but hurl to hades all the brave man makes an end of every foe then through his throat that terrible warrior drave the deadly blade and thrust it straight to where the paths of man's life led by swiftest way blood paved to doom death palsied his poor strength by diomede's hands thence rushed he on slaying the trojans storming in his might all through their fortress pierced by his long spear eurachaun fell perimestor's son renowned and phemadon aas slew agamemnon smote the master's son idomeneus struck down mimas by magus diopetus died achilles son with his resistless lance smote godlike paimon then his javelin pierced Valetus in mid-rush Antiphonus dead upon these he laid, all Priam's sons. Agenor faced him in the fight and fell. Hero on hero slew he. Everywhere stalked at his side. Death's black doom manifest. Clad in his sire's might, whomso he met he slew. Last, on Troy's king in murderous mood he came, by Zeus the hearth-lord's altar. Seeing him, old Priam knew him, and quaked not, for he longed himself to lay his life down midst his sons and craving death to achilles seed he spake fierce-hearted son of achilles strong in war slay me pity not my misery i have no will to see the sun's light more who have suffered woes so many and so dread with my sons i would die and so forget anguish and horror of war oh that thy sire had slain me ere mine eyes beheld a flame ilium had slain me when i brought to him ransom for hector whom thy father slew 
he spared me so the fate had spun my thread of destiny but thou glut my blood on my fierce heart and let me forget my pain answered achilles battle-eager son fain am i yea in haste to grant thy prayer a foe like thee i will not leave alive for naught is dearer unto men than life with one stroke swept he off that hoary head lightly as when a reaper lops an ear in parched cornfield at the harvest tide with lips yet murmuring lo it rolled afar from where with quivering limbs the body lay amidst dark purple blood and slaughtered men so lay he chiefest once of all the world in lineage wealth in many and goodly sons ah me not long abides the honour of man but shame from unseen ambush leaps on him so clutched him doom so he forgat his woes yea also did those danian car lords hurl from a high tower the babe astyanax dashing him out of life they tore the child out of his mother's arms in wrathful hate of hector who in life had dealt them such havoc therefore hated they his seed and down from that high rampart flung his child a wordless babe that nothing knew of war as mid the mountains hungry wolves chase from the mother's side a suckling calf and with malignant cunning drive it o'er an echoing cliff's edge while runs to and fro its dam with low moans mourning her dear child and a new evil followeth hard on her for suddenly lions seize her for a prey so as she agonized for her son the foe to bondage held with other captive thralls that shrieking daughter of king etion then as on those three fearful deaths she thought of husband child and father andromache longed sore to die yea for the royally born better it is to die in war than do the service of the thrall to baser folk all piteously the broken-hearted cried oh hurl my body also from the wall or down the cliff or cast me midst the fire ye argives woes are mine unutterable for peleus son smote down my noble father in thebe and in troy mine husband slew who unto me was all mine heart's desire who left me in mine halls one little child my darling and my pride of all my hopes in him fell merciless fate hath cheated me oh therefore thrust this broken-hearted one now out of life hell me not over seas mingled with spear thralls for my soul henceforth hath no more pleasure in life since god hath slain my nearest and my dearest for me waits trouble and anguish and lone homelessness so cried she longing for the grave for vile is life to them whose glory is swallowed up of shame a horror is the scorn of men but spite of her prayers to thraldom dragged they her in all the homes of troy lay dying men and rose from all a lamentable cry save only in antenor's halls for unto him the argives rendered hospitality's debt for that in time past had his roof received and sheltered godlike menelaus when he and odysseus came to claim his own therefore the mighty sons of achaea showed grace to him as to a friend and spared his life and substance fearing themis who seeth all then also princely anchises noble son hard had he fought through priam's burg that night with spear and valour and many had he slain when now he saw the city set aflame by hands of foes with her folk perishing in multitudes her treasures spoiled her wives and children dragged to thraldom from their homes no more he hoped to see the stately walls of his birth city but bethought him now how from that mighty ruin to escape and as the helmsman of a ship who toils on the deep sea and matches his craft against the winds and waves from every side rushing against him in the stormy time for spent at last both hand and heart when now the ship is foundering in the surge forsakes the helm to launch forth in a little boat and heeds no longer ship and lading so anchises gallant son forsook the town and left her to her foes 
a sea of fire. His son and father alone he snatched from death. The old man, broken down with years, he set on his broad shoulders with his own strong hands, and led the young child by his small soft hand, whose little footsteps lightly touched the ground. And, as he quaked to see that work of death, his father led him through the roar of fight, and clinging hung on him the tender child, tears down his soft cheeks streaming. But the man o'er many a body sprang with hurrying feet, And in the darkness in his own despite trampled on many. Cyprus guided them, earnest to save from that wild ruin Her son, his father, and his child. As on he pressed, the flames gave back before him everywhere. The blast of the fire-god's breath to right and left was cloven asunder. Spears and javelins hurled against him by the Achaeans harmless fell. Also to stay them, Calchas cried aloud, Forbear against Aeneas' noble head To hurl the bitter dart, the deadly spear. Fated is he by the high god's decree To pass from Xanthus, and by Tiber's flood To found a city holy and glorious Through all time, and to rule all the tribes Of men far sundered. Of his seed shall lords of the earth Rule from the rising to the setting sun. Yea, with the immortals ever shall he dwell, Who is son of Aphrodite, lovely tressed. From him too it is meet we hold our hands, Because he hath preferred his father and son to gold, To all things that might profit a man Who fleeth exile to an alien land. This one night hath revealed to us a man, Faithful to death to his father and his child. Then hearken they, and as a god did all look on him. Forth the city hasted he, whither his feet should bear him, while the foe made havoc of goodly builded Troy. Then also Menelaus in Helen's bower found, heavy with wine, ill-starred Delphibus, and slew him with the sword. But she had fled and hidden in her palace. O'er oh, the blood of that slain man exulted he, and cried, Dog! I, even I, have dealt the unwelcome death this day. No dawn divine shall meet thee again alive in Troy. I, though thou vaunt thyself spouse of the child of Zeus, the thunder-voiced. Black death hath trapped thee, slain in my wife's power. Would I had met Alexander too in fight ere this, and plucked his heart out. So my grief had been the lighter load. But he hath paid already justice debt have passed beneath death's cold dark shadow. Ha! Small joy to thee my wife was doomed to bring. Aye, wicked men never elude pure Themis. Night and day her eyes are on them, and the wide world through, above the tribes of men she floats in air, hoping of Zeus for punishment of sin. On passed he, Dealing merciless death to foes, For maddened was his soul with jealousy. Against the Trojans was his bold heart Full of thoughts of vengeance, Which were now fulfilled by the dread goddess Justice. For that theirs was that first outrage touching Helen, Theirs that profanation of the oaths, And theirs that trampling on the blood of sacrifice, When their presumptuous souls forgot the gods, Therefore the vengeance friends brought woes on them thereafter. And some died in fighting field, some now in Troy by board and bridal bower. Menelaus mid the inner chambers found at last his wife, cowering there from the wrath of her bold-hearted lord. He glared on her, hungering to slay her in his jealous rage. But winsome Aphrodite curbed him, struck out of his hand the sword, his onrush reigned. Jealousy's dark cloud she swept away, And stirred love's deep sweet wellsprings in his heart and eyes, Swept o'er him strange amazement. Powerless all was he to lift the sword against her neck, Seeing her splendor of beauty. Like a stock of dead wood in mountain forest, Which no swiftly rushing blast of north winds shake, Nor fury of south winds ever, So he stood, so dazed a bold long time. All his great strength was broken as he looked upon his wife, and suddenly had he forgotten all, yea, all her sins against her spousal troth. 
for Aphrodite made all fade away, she who subdueth all immortal hearts and mortal. Yet even so he lifted up from earth his sword, and made as he would rush upon his wife. But other was his intent, even as he sprang. He did but feign to cheat Achaean eyes. Then did his brother stay his fury, and spake with pacifying words, fearing lest all they had toiled for should be lost. Forbear wrath, Menelaus, now. T'were shame to slay thy wedded wife, for whose sake we have suffered much affliction while we sought vengeance on Priam. Not, as thou dost deem, was Helen's the sin, but his who set at naught the guest lord and thine hospitable board. So with death pangs hath God requited him. Then hearkened Menelaus to his reed, but the gods, palled in dark clouds, mourned for Troy a ruined glory, save fair tressed Tritonis and Hera. Their hearts triumphed when they saw the burg of god-descended Priam destroyed. Yet not the wise heart of Trito born herself was wholly tearless, for within her fane outraged Cassandra was of Oleus' son lust-maddened. But grim vengeance upon him ere long the goddess wreaked, repaying insult with mortal sufferance. Yea, she would not look upon the infamy, but clad herself with shame and wrath as with a cloak. She turned her stern eyes to the temple roof, and groaned the holy image, and the hollowed floor quaked mightily. Yet did he not forbear his mad sin, for his soul was lust distraught. Here, there, on all sides crumbled flaming homes in ruin down. Scorched dust with smoke was blent, Tremble the streets to the awful thunderous crash. Here burned Aeneas' palace, yonder flamed Antimachus' halls. One furnace was the height of fair-built Pergamus. Flames were roaring round Apollo's temple, round Athena's fane, and round the hearth-lord's altar. Flames licked up fair chambers of the sons, sons of a king, and all the city sank down into hell. Of Trojans, some by Argos' sons were slain, some by their own roofs crashing down in fire, giving at once ill death and tomb to them. Some in their own throats plunged the steel, when foes and fire were in the porch together seen. Some slew their wives and children, and flung themselves dead on them, when despair had done its work of horror. One who deemed the foe afar caught up a vase, and, fain to quench the flame, hasted for water, leapt unmarked on him an archive, and his spirit, heavy with wine, was thrust forth from the body by the spear. Clashed the void vase above him as he fell backward within the house. As through his hall another fled, the burning roof beam crashed down on his head, and swift death came with it. And many women, as in frenzied flight they rushed forth, suddenly remembered babes left in their beds beneath those burning roofs with wild feet sped they back the house fell in upon them and they perished mother and child horses and dogs in panic through the town fled from the flames trampling beneath their feet the dead and dashing into living men to their sore hurt shrieks rang through all the town in through his blazing porchway rushed a man to rescue wife and child through smoke and flame, blindly he groped, and perished while he cried their names, and pitiless doom slew those within. The fire glow upward mounted to the sky, the red glare o'er the firmament spread its wings, and all the tribes of folk that dwelt around beheld it, far as Ida's mountain crest, and Seager Tenedos, and Thracian Samos, and men that voyaged on the deep sea cried, the Argives have achieved their mighty task, after long toil for star-eyed Helen's sake. All Troy, the once queen city, burns in fire. For all their prayers, no god defends them now. For strong fate or sees all works of men, and the renownless and obscure to fame she raises, and brings low the exalted ones. Oft out of good evil is brought, and good from evil, mid the travail and change of life. So spake they, who
who from far beheld the glare of Troy's great burning. Compassed were her folks with wailing misery. Through her streets the foe exulted, as when maddening blasts turmoil the boundless sea, what time the altar ascends to heaven's star pavement, turned to the misty south over against Arcturus tempest breathed. And with its rising leap the wild winds forth, and ships full many are whelmed neath ravening seas, wild as those stormy winds Achaea's sons ravaged steep Ilium while she burned in flame. As when a mountain clothed with shaggy woods burns swiftly in a fire blast winged with winds, and from her tall peaks goeth up a roar, and all the forest children this way and that rush through the wood, tormented by the flame. So were the Trojans perishing. There was none to save of all the gods. Round these were staked the nets of fate, which no man can escape. Then were the Mophoon and the Camus, by mighty Theseus' mother, Aethra, met. Yearning to see them, she was guided on to meet them by some blessed one. The while, wildered from war and fire, she fled. They saw in that red glare a woman royal tall, imperial moulded, and they weened that this was Priam's queen. And with swift eagerness laid hands on her to lead her captive thence to the Danians, but piteously she moaned. Ah, do not, noble sons of warrior Greeks, to your ships hail me as I were a foe. I am not of Trojan birth. Of Danians came my princely blood renowned. In Troezen's walls Pythias begat me. Aegeus wedded me, and of my womb sprang Theseus' glory crowned. For great Zeus' sake, and your dear parents' sake, I pray you, if the seed of Theseus came hither with Atreus' sons, O oh, bring ye me unto their yearning eyes. I trow they be young men like you. My soul shall be refreshed, if living I behold those chieftains twain. Hearkening to her, they called her sire to mind, his deeds for Helen's sake, and how the sons of Zeus, the thunderer, in the old time smote Aphidnehi, when, because these were but babes, their nurses hid them far from peril of fight. And Aethra remembered all she endured through wars, as mother-in-law first, and thrall thereafter of Helen. Dumb for joy were they, till spake them of to that wistful one, even now the gods fulfill thine heart's desire. We whom thou seest are the sons of him, thy noble son. Thee shall our loving hands bear to the ships. With joy to Hellas' soil thee will we bring, where once thou wast a queen. Then his great father's mother clasped him around with clinging arms. She kissed his shoulders broad, his head, his breast, his bearded lips she kissed. And Achamis kissed withal the while she shed glad tears on these who could not choose but weep. As when one tarries long mid alien men, and folk report him dead, but suddenly he cometh home, his children see his face, and break into glad weeping. Yea, and he, his arms around them, and their little heads upon his shoulders, sobs. Echoes the home with happy mornings, music beating wings. So wept they with sweet sighs and sorrowless moans. Then, too, affliction-burdened Priam's child, Laodice, they say, stretched her hands to heaven, praying the almighty gods that earth might gape to swallow her, ere she defiled her hands with thrall's work. And a god gave ear, and rent deep earth beneath her, so by heaven's decree did earth's abysmal chasm receive the maid in Troy's last hour. Electra's self withal, the star queen lovely robed, shrouded her form in mist and cloud, and left the Pleiad band, her sisters as the olden legend tells. Still riseth up in sight of toil-worn men their bright troop in the skies, but she alone hides viewless ever, since the hollowed town of her son Dardanus fell in ruin, when Zeus most high from heaven could help her not, because to fate the might of Zeus must bow, and by the immortal's purpose all these things had come to pass, or by fate's ordinance. Still on Troy's folk the Argives wreak their wrath, and battle's issues 
strife incarnate held end of chapter 13Chapter 14 of The Fall of Troy by Smyrnanius Quintus Translated by Arthur S. Way Born 13 February 1847 Died 25 December 1930 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Then rose from ocean dawn the golden throne Up to the heavens. Night into chaos sank. And now the Argives spoiled fair-fenced Troy, And took her boundless treasures for a prey. Like river torrents seemed they, That sweep down by rain-floods swelled In thunder from the hills, And seaward hurled tall trees, And whatsoe'er grows on the mountains, Mingled with the wreck of shattered cliff and crag. So the long lines of Danians Who wasted Troy with fire seemed, Streaming with her plunder to the ships. Troy's daughters therewithal in scattered bands they held down seaward, virgins yet unwed, and new-made brides, and matrons silver-haired, and mothers from whose bosoms foes had torn babes for the last time closing lips on breast. Amidst of these Menelaus led his wife, forth the burning city, having wrought a mighty triumph, joy and shame were his. Cassandra, heavenly fair, was hailed the prize of Agamemnon. To Achilles' son, Andromache had fallen. Hecuba, Odysseus dragged unto his ship. The tears poured from her eyes as water from a spring. Trembled her limbs, fear frenzied was her heart. Rent were her hoary tresses and besprent with ashes of the hearth, cast by her hands when she saw Priam slain and Troy aflame. And I... She deeply groaned for thraldom's day that trapped her vainly loath. Each hero led a wailing Trojan woman to his ship. Here, there uprose from these the wild lament, the woeful mingling cries of mother and babe. As when with white tusks swine the herdsmen drive their younglings from the hill pens to the plain, as winter closeth in, and evermore each answereth each with mingled plaintive cries. So moaned Troy's daughters, by their foes enslaved, handmaid and queen, made one in thraldom's lot. But Helen raised no lamentation. Shame set on her dark blue eyes, and cast its flush over her lovely cheeks. Her heart beat hard, with sore misgiving, lest, as to the ship she passed, the Achaeans might mishandle her. Therefore with fluttering soul she trembled sore, and her head darkly mantled in her veil, close following trod she in her husband's steps, with cheek shame crimsoned, like the queen of love, what time the heaven abiders saw her clasped in Ares' arms. Shaming in sight of all the marriage bed, trapped in the myriad mesh toils of her Festus, tangled there she lay in agony of shame, while thronged around the blessed, and there stood her Festus' self, for fearful it is for wives to be beheld by husband's eyes doing the deed of shame. Lovely as she in form, and roseate blush, passed Helen mid the Trojan captives on to the Argive ships. But the folk all around marvelled to see the glory of loveliness of that all flawless woman. No man dared or secretly or openly to cast reproach on her. As on a goddess, all gazed on her with adoring, wistful eyes as when to wanderers on the stormy sea, after long time and passionate prayer, the sight of fatherland is given. From deadly deeps escaped, they stretch their hands to her joyful soul. So joy the Danians all. No man of them remembered any more war's travail and pain. Such thoughts Cytheria stirred in them, for grace to Helen starry-eyed, and Zeus her sire. Then... When he saw that burg beloved destroyed, Xanthus, scarce drawing breath from bloody war, Mourned with his nymphs for ruin fallen on Troy, Mourned for the city of Priam blotted out. As when hell lashes a field of ripened wheat, And beats it small, and smites off the ears with merciless scourge, And levelled with the ground are stalks, And on the earth is all the grain woefully wasted, And the harvest lord is stricken with deadly grief, 
so Xanthus' soul was utterly whelmed in grief for Ilium, made a desolation. Grief undying was his, immortal though he was. Morn Samoas and long-reached Ida, all who on Ida dwelt, welled from afar the ruin of Priam's town. But with loud laughter of glee the Argives sought their galleys, chanting the triumph might of victory, chanting now the blessed gods, now their own valour, and a pious work ever renowned. Their song soared up to heaven like multitudinous cries of daws when breaks a day of sunny calm and windless air after ruining storm. From their glad hearts so rose the joyful clamour, till the gods heard and rejoiced in heaven, all who helped with willing hands the war fain Argive men. But chafe those others which had aided Troy, beholding Priam's city wrapped in flame, yet powerless for her help to override fate. For not Cronos' son can stay the hand of destiny, whose might transcendeth all the immortals, and Zeus sanctioneth all her deeds. The Argives on the flaming altar wood laid many thighs of oxen, and made haste to spill sweet wine on their burnt offerings, thanking the gods for the great work achieved. And loudly at the feast they sang the praise of all the mailed men whom the horse of tree had ambushed. Far-famed Sinon they extolled for that dire torment he endured of foes. Yea, song and honour guerdons without end all rendered him. And that resolved soul glad-hearted joyed for the Argives' victory, and for his own misfeaturing sorrowed not. For to the wise and prudent man renown is better far than gold, than goodly head, than all good things men have or hope to win. So, feasting by the ships all void of fear, cried one to another ever and anon, we have touched the goal of this long war, have won glory, have smitten our foes and their great town. Now grant, O Zeus, to our prayers safe home return. But not to all the sire vouchsafed return. Then rose a cunning harper in their midst, and sang the song of triumph and of peace rewon, and with glad hearts, untouched by care, they heard. For no more fear of war had they, but of sweet toil of law-abiding days, and blissful fleeting hours henceforth they dreamed. All the war's story in their eager ears he sang, how leagued peoples gathering met at hallowed Aulis, how the invincible strength of Peleus' son smote fenced cities twelve in sea-raids, how he marched o'er leagues on leagues of land, and spoiled eleven. All he wrought in fight with Telephus and Etigon, how he slew giant sickness, all the toil of war that through Achilles' wrath befell the Achaeans, how he dragged dead Hector round his own Troy's wall, and how he slew in fight Penthesilea and Tithonus' son, how Aeas laid low Glaucus, lord of spears. Then sang he how the child of Aeacus' son struck down Eurypylus, and how the shafts of Philoctetus dealt to Paris death. Then the song named all the heroes who passed in ambush to the horse of Guile. And him the fall of God descended Priam's burg. The feast he sang last, and peace after war. Then many another, as they listed, sang. But when above those feasters midnight stars hung, ceased the Danians from the feast and wine, and turned to sleep's forgetful care, for that with yesterday's war travail all were wearied, wherefore they, who fain all night had revelled, needs must cease, how loath so e'er. Sleep drew them thence, here and there soft slumbered they. But in his tent Menelaus lovingly with bright-haired Helen spake, for on their eyes sleep had not fallen yet. The Cyperian queen brooded above their souls, that old in love might be renewed, and heartache chased away. Helen first broke the silence, and she said, O oh, Menelaus, be not wroth with me. Not of my will I left thy roof, thy bed. But Alexander and the sons of Troy came upon me, and snatched away 
when thou wast far hence. Oft times did I essay by the death news to perish, wretchedly, or by the bitter sword. But still they stayed mine hand, and spake comfortable words to solve my grief for thee and my sweet child. For her sake, for the sake of old in love, and for thine own sake, I beseech thee now, forget thy stern displeasure against thy wife. Answered her Menelaus, wise of wit, No more remember past griefs, seal them up hid in thine heart. Let all be locked within the dim dark mansion of forgetfulness. What profits it to call ill deeds to mind? Glad was she then, fear flitted from her heart, And came sweet hope that her lord's wrath was dead. She cast her arms around him, And their eyes with tears were brimming As they made sweet moan. Then side by side they laid them, And their hearts thrilled with remembrance Of old spousal joy as a vine and ivory intertwined their stems each around other, that no might of wind avails to sever them. So clung these twain, twined in the passionate embrace of love. When came upon these two sorrow-drowning sleep, even then above his son's head rose and stood, godlike Achilles might he shade, in form as when he lived, the Trojans' bane, the joy of Greeks, and kissed his neck and flashing eyes lovingly, and spake comfortable words. All hail, my son, vex not thine heart with grief for thy dead sire, for with the blessed gods now at the feast I sit. Refrain thy soul from sorrow, and plant my strength within thy mind. Be foremost of the Argives ever, Yield to none in valour, but in counsel, bow before thine elders. So shall all acclaim thy courtesy. Honour princely men and wise, for ever the true man is the true man's friend, even as the vile man cleaveth to the knave. If good thy thought be, good shall be thy deeds, but no man shall attain to honour's height, except his heart be right within. Her stem is hard to climb, and high in heaven spread her branches. Only they whom strength and toil attend strain up to pluck her blissful fruit, climbing the tree of honour, glory crowned. Thou therefore follow fame, and let thy soul be not in sorrow afflicted over much, nor in prosperity over glad. To friends, to comrades, child and wife, be kindly of heart. Remembering still that near to all men stand the gates of doom, the mansions of the dead. For humankind are like the flowers of grass, the blossom of spring. These fade while those bloom. Therefore be thou ever kindly with thy kind. Now to the Argives say, to Atreus' son Agamemnon chiefly, if my battle toil round Priam's walls, or those sea raids I led, or ever I set foot on Trojan land, be in their hearts remembered. To my tomb be Priam's daughter Polyxena led, whom as my portion of the spoil I claim, and sacrificed thereon. Else shall my wrath against them more than for Briseis burn. The waves of the great deep will I turmoil to bar their way, upstirring storm on storm, that through their own mad folly pining away, here they may linger long, until to me they pour drink offerings, yearning sore for home. But when they have slain the maiden, I grudge not that whoso will may bury her far from me. Then as a wind breath swift he fleeted thence, and came to the Elysian plain, where to a path to heaven reacheth, for the feet ascending and descending of the blessed. Then the son started up from sleep, and called his sire to mind, and glowed the heart in him. When to the wide heaven the child of mist uprose, scattering night, unveiling earth and air, then from their rest upsprang Achaea's sons, yearning for home. 
with laughter gan they hail down to the sea the keels but lo their haste was reined in by achilles mighty son he assembled them and told his sire's behest hearken dear sons of argives battle staunch to my glorious father's hest to me spoken in darkness slumbering on my bed he saith he dwells with the immortal gods he biddeth you and atreus son the king to bring as his war guerdon passing fair to his dim dark tomb polyxena queenly robed to slay her there but far from thence to bury her but if ye slight him and essay to sail the sea he threateneth to stir up the waves to bar your path upon the deep and here storm-bound long time to hold you ships and men then hearkened they and as to a god they prayed for even now a storm-blast on the sea upheaved the waves broad back and thronging fast more than before beneath a maddening wind tossed the great deep smit by poseidon's hands for a grace to strong achilles all the winds swooped on the waters prayed the dardans all to achilles and a man to his fellow cried great zeus seed achilles verily was therefore is he a god who in days past dwelt among us for lapse of dateless time makes not the sons of heaven to fade away then to achilles tomb the host returned and led the maid as calf by herdsmen dragged for sacrifice from woodland pastures torn from its mother's side and lowing loud and long it moans with anguished heart so priam's child welled in the hands of foes down streamed her tears as when beneath the heavy sacks of sand olives clear-skinned ne'er blotched by drops of storm pour out their oil when the long levers creak as strong men strain the cords so poured the tears of travel burdened priam's daughter held to stern achilles tomb tears blent with moans drenched were her bosom folds glistened the drops on flesh clear white as costly ivory then to crown all her griefs yet sharper pain fell on the heart of hapless hecuba then did her soul recall that awful dream the vision of sleep of that night overpast her seem that on achilles tomb she stood moaning her hair down streaming to the ground and from her breast blood dripped to earth the while and drenched the tomb fear haunted touching this foreboding all calamity she wailed piteously far rang her wild lament as a dog moaning at her master's door utters long howls her teats with milk distent whose whelps ere their eyes open to the light her lords afar have flung a prey to kites and now with short sharp cries she plains and now long howling the weird outcry thrills the air so welled so shrieked for her child hecuba ah me what sorrows first or last shall I lament, heart anguished, who am full of woes? Those unimagined ills my son, my king, have suffered, or my city, or my daughter shamed, or my despair, my day of slavery. Oh, the grim fates have caught me in a net of manifold ills. Oh, child, they have spun for thee a dread weird of unimagined misery. They have thrust thee away when near was hymen's hymn for thine espousals mark thee for destruction dark unendurable unspeakable for lo a dead man's heart achilles heart is by our blood made warm with life to-day o child dear child that i might die with thee that earth might swallow me ere i see thy doom so cried she weeping never ceasing tears for grief on bitter grief encompassed her but when these reached divine achilles tomb then did his son unsheath the wetted sword his left hand grasped the maid and his right hand was laid upon the tomb and thus he cried hear father thy son's prayer hear the prayers of argives and be no more wroth with us lo unto thee now all thy heart's desire we will fulfil be gracious to us thou and to our praying grant sweet home return into the maid's throat then he plunged the blade of death 
the dear life straightway sobbed she forth with the last piteous moan of parting breath face downward to the earth she fell all round her flesh was crimsoned from her neck as snow stained on a mountain side with scarlet blood rushing from javelin smitten boar or bear the maiden's corpse then gave they to be borne unto the city to antenor's home for that when troy yet stood he nurtured her in his fair halls a bride for his own son eurymachus the old man buried her king priam's princess child nigh his own house by ganymede's shrine and over against the temple of pallas the unwearied one then were the waves stilled and the blast was hushed to sleep and all the sea floor lulled to calm swift with glad laughter hie they to the ships hymning achilles and the blessed ones a feast they made first serving thighs of kine for the immortals gladsome sacrifice steamed on all sides in cups of silver and gold they drank sweet wine and their hearts leaped up with hope of winning to their fatherland again but when with meats and wine all these were filled then in their eager ears spake nilius son hear friends who have escaped the long turmoil of war that i may say to you one welcome word now is the hour of heart's delight the hour of home return away achilles soul hath ceased from ruinous wrath earth shaker stills the stormy wave and gentle breezes blow no more the waves toss high haste hail the ships down to the sea now ho for home return eager they heard and ready made the ships then was a marvellous portent seen of men for all unhappy priam's queen was changed from woman's form into a pitiful hound and all men gathered round in wondering awe then all her body a god transformed to stone a mighty marvel for men yet unborn at calchas bidding this the achaeans bore in a swift ship to hellespont's far side then down to the sea in haste they ran the keels their wealth they laid aboard even all the spoil taken or ever unto troy they came from conquered neighbour peoples Therewithal, what so they took from Hylium, wherein most they joyed, for untold was the sum thereof. And followed with them many a captive maid with anguished heart. So went they aboard the ships. But Calchas would not with that eager host launch forth, yea, he had fain withheld therefrom all the Archaeans, for his prophet's soul foreboded dread destruction, looming o'er the Argives by the rocks Corfarian but not they heeded him malignant fate deluded men's souls only amphilochus the wise in prophet lore the gallant son of princely amphiarius stayed with him fated were these twain far from their own land to reach pamphylian and cilician burgs and this the gods thereafter brought to pass but now the achaeans cast the hawsers loose from shore in haste they heaved the anchor stones roared hellespont beneath the flashing oars crashed the prows through the sea about the bows much armour of slain foes was lying heaped along the bulwarks victory trophies hung countless with garlands wreathed they all the ships their heads the spears the shields wherewith they had fought against their foes the chiefs stood on the prows and poured into the dark sea once and again wine to the gods to grant them safe return but with the winds their prayers mixed far away vainly they floated blent with cloud and air with anguished hearts the captive maids looked back on ilium and with sobs and moans they wailed striving to hide their grief from argive eyes clasping their knees some sat in misery some veiled with their hands their faces others nursed young children in their arms those innocents not yet bewail their day of bondage nor their country's ruin all their thoughts were set on comfort of the breast for the babe's heart hath none affinity with sorrow all set with unbraided hair and pitiful breast scored with their fingers 
On their cheeks there lay stains of dried tears, And streamed thereover now fresh tears, full fast, As still they gazed aback on the lost hapless home, Wherefrom yet rose the flames, and o'er it writhed the rolling smoke. Now on Cassandra marvelling they gazed, Calling to mind her prophecy of doom, But at their tears she laughed in bitter scorn in anguish for the ruin of her land. Such Trojans as had scaped from pitiless war gathered to render now the burial dues unto their city slain. And Tenor led to that sad work. One pyre for all they raised. But laughed with triumphing hearts the Argive men, as now with oars they swept o'er the dark sea ways, now hastily hoisted sails high o'er the ships and fleeted fast the stern Dardania land, and hero Achilles' tomb. But now their hearts, how blithe so e'er, remembered comrades slain, and sorely grieved, and wistfully they looked back to the alien land. It seemed to them I sliding farther from their ships. Full soon by Tenedos' beaches spilt they. Now they ran by Carissa, Smythian Phoebus' holy place, and hollowed Cilia. Far away were glimpsed the windy heights of Lesbos, Rounded now was Lecton's foreland, where is the last peak of Ida. In the sails loud hummed the wind, crashed round the prows the dark surge. The long waves showed shadowy hollows, far the white wake gleamed. Now had the Argives all to the hallowed soil of Hellas won, by perils of the deep unscathed. But for Athena, daughter of Zeus the Thunderer, and her indignation's wrath. When nigh Euboea's windy heights they drew, she rose, in anger unappeasable, against the Locrian king, devising doom, crushing and pitiless, and drew nigh to Zeus, lord of the gods, and spake to him apart, in wrath that in her breast would not be pent. Zeus, father, unendurable of gods is men's presumption. They reck not of thee, of none of the blessed reck they, for as much as vengeance followeth after sin no more. And oft times more afflicted are good men than evil, and their misery hath no end. Therefore no man regardeth justice. Shame lives not with men, and I, I will not dwell hereafter in Olympus, not be named thy daughter, if I may not be avenged on the Achaeans' reckless sin. Behold, within my very temple only a son hath wrought iniquity, hath pitied not Cassandra, stretching unregarded hands once and again to me. Nor did he dread my might, nor reverenced in his wicked heart the immortal. But a deed intolerable he did. Therefore let not thy spirit divine begrudge my heart's desire, so that all men may quake before the manifest wrath of gods. Answered the sire with heart-assuaging words, Child, not for the Argive's sake withstand I thee, but all mine armory which the Cyclops might do in my favour wrought with tireless hands, to thy desire I give. O strong heart, hurl a ruining storm thyself on the Argive fleet. Then down before the aweless maid he cast swift lightning, thunder, and deadly thunderbolt, and her heart leapt, and gladdened was her soul. She dawned the stormy aegis flashing far, adamantine, massy, a marvel to the gods whereon was wrought Medusa's ghastly head. Fearful, strong serpents, breathing forth the blast of ravening fire while on the face thereof, crashed on the queen's breast all the aegis links, as after lightning crashes the firmament. Then grasps she her father's weapons, which no god save Zeus can lift, and wide Olympus shook. Then swept she the clouds and mist together on high, Night over earth was poured, haze o'er the sea. Zeus watched, and was right glad, as broad heaven's floor rocked neath the goddess' feet, and crashed the sky, as though invincible Zeus rushed forth to war. Then sped she Iris unto Aeolus, from heaven far flying over the misty seas, to bid him send forth all his buffeting winds, or iron-bound Caphareus cliffs to sweep ceaselessly and with ruin of maddening blast to upheave the sea. Iris heard, and swift she darted, 
through cloud billows plunging down thou hadst said lo in the sky dark water and fire and to aeolia came she isle of caves of echoing dungeons of mad raging winds with rugged ribs of mountains overarched where by the mansion stands of aeolus hippotas son him found she there within with wife and twelve sons and she told him athena's purpose toward the home-bound achaeans he denied her not but passed forth of his halls and in resistless hands upswung his trident smiting the mountain side within whose chasm cell the wild winds dwelt tempestuously shrieking ever pealed weird roarings of their voices round its vaults cleft by his might was the hillside forth they poured he bade them on their wings bear blackest storm to upheave the sea and shroud Caphereus heights swiftly up sprang they ere the king's command was fully spoken mightily moaned the sea as they rushed o'er it waves like mountain cliffs from all sides were uprolled the achaeans hearts were terror palsied as the towering surge now swung the ships up high through palling mist now hurled them rolled as down a precipice to dark abysses up through the yawning deeps some power resistless belts the boiling sand from the sea's floor tossed in despair fear dazed men could not grasp the oar nor reef the sail about the hard arm how so fain ere the winds rent it could not with sheets trim the torn canvas buffeted so they were by ruining blast the helmsman had no power to guide the rudder with his practised hands for those ill winds hurled all confusedly no hope of life was left them blackest night fury of tempest wrath of deathless gods raged round them still poseidon heaved and swung the merciless sea to work the heart's desire of his brother's glorious child and she on high stormed with her lightnings ruthless in her rage thundered from heaven zeus in purpose fixed to glorify his daughter all the isles and mainland round were lashed by leaping seas nigh to Euboea, where the power divine scourged most with unrelenting stroke on stroke the argives groan and shriek of perishing men rang through the ships started great beams and snapped with ominous sound for ever ship on ship with shivering timbers crashed with hopeless toil men strained with oars to thrust back hulls that reeled down on their own but with the shattered planks were hurled into the abyss to perish there by pitiless doom for beams of foundering ships from this from that side battered out their lives and crushed were all their bodies wretchedly some in the ships fell down and like dead men lay there some in the grip of destiny clinging to oars smooth shaven tried to swim some upon planks were tossing roared the surge from fathomless depths it seemed as though sea sky and air were blended all confusedly still from olympus thundered a tritony wielded her father's power unshamed still the welkin shrieked round her ruin of wrath upon aeas hurled she on his ship dashed she a thunderbolt and shivered it wide in a moment into fragments small while earth and air yelled o'er the wreck and whirled and plunged and fell the whole sea thereon they and the ship were altogether flung forth about them swept the giant waves round them leapt lightnings naming through the dark choked with a strangling surf of hissing brine gasping out life they drifted o'er the sea but even in death those captive maids rejoiced as some ill-starred ones clasping to their breasts their babes sank in the sea some flung their arms round danian's horror-stricken heads and dragged these down with them so rendering to their foes requital for foul outrage done to them and from on high the haughty trito born looked down on all this and her heart was glad but aias floated now on a galley's plank now through the brine with strong hands o'er his path like some old titan tireless in his might cleft was the salt sea surge by sinewy hands of that undaunted man the gods beheld and marvelled at his courage and his strength but now the billows swung him up on high through the misty air as though a mountain's peak now whelmed him down as they would bury him in ravening whirlpits yet his stubborn hands toiled on unwearied 
I to right and left flashed lightnings down and quenched them in the sea. For not yet was the child of Thunderer Zeus purposed to smite him dead, despite her wrath, ere he had drained the cup of travail and pain down to the dregs. So in the deep long time affliction wore him down, tormented sore on every side. Grim fate stood round the man, unnumbered. Yet despair kindled strength. He cried, Though all the Olympians banded come in wrath, and rouse against me all the sea, I will escape them. But no whit did he elude the gods' wrath, for the shaker of the earth, in fierceness of his indignation, marked where his hands clung to the Gyarian rock, and in stern anger, with an earthquake shook both sea and land. Around on all sides, crashed Caphera's cliffs. Beneath the sea king's wrath, the surf-tormented beaches shrieked and roared. The broad crag rifted, reeled into the sea the rock where to his desperate hands had clung. Yet did he writhe up round its jutting spurs, while flayed his hands were, and from neath his nails the blood ran. Wrestling with him, roared the waves, and the foam whitened all his hair and beard. Yet had he escaped perchance his evil doom, had not Poseidon, wroth with his hardihood, cleaving the earth, hurled down the chasm of the rock, as in old time Pallas heaved on high Sicily, and on huge Enceladus dashed down the isle, which burns with the burning yet of that immortal giant, as he breathes fire underground. So did the mountain crag, hurled from on high, bury the Locrian king, pinning the strong man down, a wretch crushed flat. And on him death's black destruction came, whom land and sea alike were leagued to slay. Still over the great deep were swept the rest of those Achaeans, crouching terror days down in the ships, save those that mid the waves had fallen. Misery encompassed all, for some with heavily plunging prows drave on, with keels upturned some drifted. Here were masts snapped from the hulls by rushing gust, and there were tempest-rifted wrecks of scattered beams, and some had sunk, whelmed in the mighty deep, swamped by the torrent downpour from the clouds. For these endured not madness of wind-tossed sea, leagued with heaven's water-spout. For streamed the sky ceaselessly, like a river, while the deep raved round them, and one cried, Such floods on men fell only when Deucalion's deluge came, when earth was drowned and all was fathomless sea. So cried a Danian, seeing soul appall that wild storm. Thousands perished, corpses thronged the great sea highways, all the beaches were too straight for them, the surf belched multitudes forth on the land, the heavy booming sea with weltering beams of ships was wholly paved, and here and there the grey waves gleamed between. So found they each his several evil fate, some whelmed beneath broad rushing billows, some wretchedly perishing with their shattered ships by Napolis devising on the rocks. Wroth for that son whom they had done to death, he, when the storm rose and the Argives died, rejoiced amid his sorrow, seeing a god gave to his hands revenge, which now he wreaked upon the host he hated, as o'er the deep they tossed sore harassed. To his sea-god sire he prayed that all might perish, ships and men, whelmed in the deep. Poseidon heard his prayer, and on the dark surge swept them nigh his land. He, like a harbour warder, lifted high blazing torch, and so by guile he trapped the Achaean men, who deemed that they had won a sheltering haven, but sharp reefs and crags gave awful welcome unto ships and men, who, dashed to pieces on the cruel rocks in the black night, crowned ills with dire ills. Some few escaped, by a god or power unseen, plucked from death's hand. Athena now rejoiced her heart within, and now was racked with fears for prudent-souled Odysseus, for his weird was through Poseidon's wrath to suffer woes full many. But Earth-shaker's jealousy now burned against those long walls and towers, up-piled by the strong Argives for a fence against the Trojans' battle onset. Swiftly then he swelled to our brimming all the sea that rolls from Oxine down to Hellespont, and hurled it on the shore of Troy. And Zeus, for a grace unto the glorious shaker of earth, poured rain from heaven. With all, far darter bare in that great work his part. From Ida's heights 
Into one channel led he all her streams, And flooded the Achaeans' work. The sea dashed o'er it, And the roaring torrent still rushed on, Swollen by the rains of Zeus, And the dark surge of the wide moaning sea Still hurled them back from mingling with the deep, Till all the Danian walls were blotted out Beneath their desolating flood. Then earth was by Poseidon chasm cleft, up rushed deluge of water, slime and sand, while quaked Sigium with a mighty shock, and roared the beach and foundations of the land Dardanian. So vanished, whelmed from sight that mighty rampart. Earth asunder yawned, and all sank down, and only sand was seen when back the sea rolled, or the beach outspread far down the booming shore. All this the immortals' anger wrought, but in their ships the Argives storm-dispersed went sailing on. So came they home, as heaven guided each, even all that scaped the fell tempest blast. End of chapter 14 End of The Fall of Troy By Smyrnanius Quintus Translated by Arthur S. Way Born 13 February 1847 Died 25 December 1930.